Sure, why not? <laughs> Give ourselves a big round of applause. We showed up in the morning, uh, refreshed. All righty. We are on to a new project, a really cool project, in my opinion, here on the TNT Double Shot. I'm Trent Bell. I'm an architectural photographer, and this over here is... Tim, studio manager, retoucher. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, this project we have here is a sea sauna. Uh, this is just south of Mount Desert Island. It's a tiny little guy made by Brendan Ravenhill, which you can follow him on Instagram at. I think it's Brendan Ravenhill. Something like that. Yeah. Boop. Like we can put his link. <laughs> yeah. Up. Call him um, Brendan Ravenhill, we shot this for Dwell. Uh, so interesting kind of process of how we got to there to be able to have a commission project from Dwell, which was always kind of, for me, was always a, oh, someday I got to get something yeah, to Dwell. The and, pinnacle like, of a place to like, that's where I want to be public. Yeah, yeah. for like uh, a residential or editorial slash architectural um, publication that you that I would be proud to be in. Dwell is definitely one of them for mm -hmm. sure. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, brief overview of the project. This is a sauna built out of essentially found pieces of wood and everything else. Um, all locally sourced stuff on an Island off of Bar Harbor. Um, the family that lives there and uses this and built it, uh, uh kind of grew up, uh, there off and on, on on the island over the summer and then he lived there through the winter and everything else worked on lobster boats and stuff but very connected to this place and a uh, very talented designer uh, owns a lighting lighting pro not production but they make just all these incredible light fixtures yeah. and everything else yep. Bren raven hill what's the name of their raven hill i forget the Studio name of I, I don't know we'll put it right here um, so, uh, we, let's see, before this, we've had a couple projects in dwell, like in the publication, and then a couple that they picked up just online and it just through those interactions of presenting stuff to them, getting stuff accepted, you start to build a relationship with p potential people at the magazine who will say, oh, there's a project in that area. We should mm -hmm. touch base with that guy. Yep. So it's, it's through the not essentially just badgering people like, hey, I can shoot stuff. Get me to go do it. Right. it it's kind of like you have to come with a publication to a publication with something that you've already shot and present it, uh, a publication of this level. I feel like most of the time that's how it's operated for us. We, we've presented a project to yeah. Dwell or generally a publication, but this is the first time we've received a request to go shoot a specific project yeah they this is the first time they've directly commissioned us rather than us approaching uh, a publication so dwell contacts they wanted still images and video uh but this is not like a commercial space and it's not a minoti boston showroom right so how do you approach this kind of project how do you shoot it how do you video it? How do you stitch that together in post and all that? Um, there's no sliders. There's no jibs. There's it, it's run yeah. and gun. So when we when we shot this, the weather was horrible. Um, there was nothing really that we wanted to control in this, other than making it like a feeling of actually being there and observing the process of putting this sea sauna into the harbor and and how that works and the feeling of actually being there. Uh, so myself and, uh, Corey DeRocher, the guy who usually is my assistant, uh, when I go on shoots, he's also a very talented photographer and videographer, and he came with me and we shot this whole thing together. I, I primarily did the still imagery while he was doing a lot of the video capture. And then when I wasn't shooting stills, I'd switch. I was using, Corey was primarily on the C200 and I was mm -hmm. on, uh, the Canon cause I wasn't. There's a few images here that were shot with the Fuji, but most of them were at the Canon because I just didn't want to risk the Fuji in all that weather. <laughs> Plus the Canon's a little quicker to like operate yeah, and move. For, uh, and, and... for an editorial style and everything else, it just worked better. But there are a few good images that I got out of the Fuji when it wasn't raining. 
Um, but we approached it uh, very much in an editorial style, try not to get too fussy about everything um, and just kind of be present and shooting away, um, but not try and control the situation. Uh, what else? The uh, Dwell contacted us and it was a bit of a negotiation back and forth because I was like, yeah, I can do both still in video, but to capture them both well, I wouldn't mind a little more budget to bring a videographer with me rather than me switching back and forth between stuff. And then there's the edit and everything else. And they were very accommodating. They're good to work with. Uh, they gave us a respectable budget for editorial for sure. And it was just a super cool project uh, to be able to do. So let us go through a few of the images and right, yeah. see what else uh, of discussion it sparks. So, so this, this is the set that was um, selected by the... Selected magazine. by Dwell. We yep. had selected it down to like 144 potential. Yeah, I think you shot a couple thousand images for this. Yeah, I mean, it was... When you're shooting that style, like documentary style, it's like that's what, you, what right. you're going to end up with is, you know, a lot to go through. But, right. <laughs> um, I think I think we whittled it down to 150, roughly. Roughly 150. And then these are the 20, I think, that they chose to, right. to publish. I don't know if they used all of them in the magazine or not, but um, this is the set that they went with. Right. Uh, they'll use them online and everything too. And to me, like, I'd love to do a one point on this and have it perfectly centered, but you, you position yourself quickly and you shoot what you can get while the actual stuff is happening. So not everything's on center, blah, blah, blah. But, um, super cool little project, how it was made and what it accommodates for the experience of the people who built it and everything else is, is very nice to be there and see that. Um, you have to go out there and actually kindle and make a fire and everything else. But it's in this location that just feels like to be out there and experience that was was really, it's a place. And it has a really, really nice feel to it. I think the weather in that on that day was Added. the reason for that. I, th I feel like yeah. it just speaks to the mid-coast, yeah. sort of fog, the rain. That this, cold, this was in the foggiest. Feeling time period too. what's that? that this was in the foggest time period. yeah the foggest yeah instead of august up foggest. down east they call it foggest um yeah this is you know some of the friends of brendan were were out using it when we'd ask him to do cannonballs and dives and stuff like that um so you had a little bit of directing in a like little bit yeah we were a in bit. a boat going around the project at points and it was like all right you guys just do what you normally do yeah. and and then we had the ability to be like, do a cannonball. And yeah. So they'd do that, and they'd dive in, and they'd hang out, wait for the next thing. That's the interior. See the little stove on the side. You can put rocks on top of that little stove. But, I mean, the stove was made out of reclaimed materials. I think most all of it was reclaimed materials just from the location, um, and it's on an island. So anything that you can get out to an island is just it goes double in cost. Right, yeah all the time use, so using use what's around yeah using what's around is is a very effective manner but when we started the project with them it was still at their house and they were kind of getting it ready to to tow it away um you were there for like launch day basically yeah launch day uh the idea was to get the experience of putting it into the water but also just uh, the whole feel of the details and the construction of it and the experience of it so we had a friend that came over with this kind of lift uh, heavy equipment thing, and they just kind of like roped the axle onto, you know, the the sauna and just kind of put it and attached it to it and just kind of went through the town and there's no got rule it book there. for how this works. It's just like, let's just figure this out, yeah, strap it on. We'll there's go. no cop cars to really pull you over <laughs> yeah. on the island and be like, you can't do that. Um, but yeah, it's and this building on the left here is the inspiration for the crusty crab in spongebob oh, yeah. square pants on the left there because the guy who crusty. created spongebob square pants worked in that building yeah. as a kid growing up i like that shot because it's you got those those historic buildings and then you got this little new one kind of squeaking its way through <laughs> like i'm just i'm little and want to be like you guys <laughs> It'll be yeah. crusty in a couple of years. Yeah, it'll, it'll have moss and crust all over it. So right when we got to the water, it started like coming down. Like the um, heavens opened up, I think. Yes, it, 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 it did. Something like that. That's funny, is that me? No. No? That is not me. I'm like, hmm. Um, yeah, they're, they're right there. It started raining cats and dogs. And then this was like after raining cats and dogs and had a little break, but 
they had this boat had actually sunk the year before somehow came like on a mooring or you know and they had had it completely rebuilt really nice little little runabout um that they used kind of tow it out there get it in place attach it to the mooring uh just tried to get like all these moments and everything else of putting it in um and getting it there and there was uh two more images that they did use those interior images that we went back and shot oh them right actually right. in the sauna to give it a little more scale um but that's you know basically it out of you know the i like the kind of detail in place that's nice out of the two thousand images it's it's right that, that's the story that's the story and now the to me this was like the the few that kind of like all right if you're going to encapsulate the whole thing these are the few images that it came down to but the video to me just says so much more in mm. in this the just that I'm really happy with how the video turned out. But so when you're shooting a project like this, are you? Did you even look at the weather at all, or you're just kind of like, well, no, it's uh, the coast. Expect anything. I mean, they you, had the day that they had to do it, and it was like, dude, it's gonna be a horrible day. You sure you want us to shoot yeah. it? And they're like, it's all we got. And and it's kind of like I'm I'm now glad that it was like that because yeah. it adds to the feel of the whole thing and the mystique of. Main. it's kind of like when you when you observe scandinavian countries and they're doing all this normal stuff but in brutal weather right there's some kind of like oh you guys you don't go stop, on with yeah. life and you don't right. just retreat into your just you know double wide work. trailer and right. wait till the snow blows over you know it it's like they really just work they're like yeah. yeah no we still do stuff outside we still have gas you know and in the same way, it's just kind of like the weather comes and goes here. And it's when you got plans, you don't change your plans. You just do what you're going to do and just dress a little differently. And, you know. So do you think about when, like, your gear in that situation? Like The boat just, we were like, shooting well, from had a, just a tiny bit of a cover on the front, like a little uh, canvas cover mm -hmm. that we could hide under. And we unzip the window on the front and could shoot through while being dripped on, but not completely yeah. rained on. Uh when I saw what the weather is going to be, uh, I knew I, I was going to take the Canon rather than the Fuji. Um, and I have lenses with the f Canon that can reach a little farther, the 70 right. to 200. I don't, you don't hardly ever typically use like a 200 in architecture unless you're catch capturing something like across a landscape right, yeah, kind of, yeah. you know, typically you're, you're in, in under this the situation range. you're moving all over the place. You don't know how far away you're going to be, how right. close. So yeah, the, the Fuji is a better camera and gets a better image, in my opinion, but not as versatile, quick, and reliable as the Canon. So, right. use the Canon here. Use the Fuji for a couple shots when it was not raining, and we had a little bit more time. Um, but yeah, it it was a fairly basic approach that just mostly you had to allow yourself to be editorially minded in your approach rather than trying to create the perfect shot. It's just like be present and observe that hard? what's happening. Is that hard to get over that like kind of mental? Hurdle? No, for like, me, well, it was very about free. The one, one point perspective, like you just wanted to move it a little bit, but like, All right. I don't feel that until I look at the image later. Yeah. I'm like, ah, man, Even I wish moment, that was, you're not like, waiting. I, I'm, I mean, in the moment I like stepped onto the dock and I was like, oh, we'll get us, you know, just straight on. But you don't have the time to really like put it down and turn the level on on the back of the camera and make sure that you're level mm -hmm. and then look at the you just got to get it while he's moving that rock so you do the best you can and, and you move on in it and in all those imperfections the the idea comes across that this is just reality that right. you're there capturing and there's an authentic piece to that that goes along with the aesthetic of dwell mm -hmm. Like when we've shot actual homes that they've featured, knowing that how their aesthetic and their authenticity is, they they lean more towards authentic than um, like perfect architectural right. photography. So you you allow just what's going on to go on and be more of an observer rather than controlling and forming this you know really really refined right. presentation of something. It's more like just capture the the life and the presence that you feel in being there. So there, you you let a lot of that go, and uh, it, for me, it's it's refreshing to work in that different manner. Yeah.
and it was it's been it was really fun to do a video in this manner too where it's like all right we don't have to a tripod here and set up yeah, and no slide, yeah, with the just, slider and i mean you get the interview and then it's all just kind of pretty much handheld at yeah that point yeah so we had all the still stuff uh, that we did, and then we had a whole video that we captured as we were shooting the still stuff, and then we had an interview that we did with Brendan um, that we kind of pulled the audio uh, narrative from, and then we used that interview uh, and interacted with Eric Ratanoff, Story First, who we've done a lot of work with. And we asked him to take the interview and to turn it into a story that that uh, was, you know, it, it felt captivating enough mm -hmm. for that three-ish minute expanse to then just use the B-roll to s tell the story along with that. And I'm not really skilled at putting together a narrative, um, but I really enjoy the visual narrative kind of going along with that. We'll see that in the next video. Um, but yeah, for... For the still capture, it was very much um, don't try and turn this into an architectural project. Like the only real architectural mm. images we got on a tripod were the ones that I framed up inside the sauna looking at the interior. Right. Um, we can uh, put, if it just in post, throw up those other two images to go through behind us here uh, to see the, you know, the, it's just, just set up with everyone in there. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, because actually everything was just so fast paced and everything else that I kind of forgot to get this framed up single point perspective of everyone in there enjoying it. Mm -hmm. I got some really rough ones, but they weren't as as clean as they could have been. And I was going to be up that way anyways for another job. So we just went back down there again and, and got like literally came out. They all got in the sauna, did their thing, warmed it up. We took like 10 minutes to get a shot and then we left. That was it. <laughs> that was it. Easy. But yeah. It's so the easiest interior you've probably ever shot, right? I mean, it's maybe <laughs> one room. But um, yeah, after that, there's a huge process of going through all those images, which can be difficult. Um, but, you know, you, you fall asleep with your finger on the advance button and wake up with the light room <laughs> going. Bzzz. But yeah, that, that was pretty much. Is there. Is there any other questions that we should address hmm. with with a project like this? It's so very different from what we typically do. The interview, whether it was there like a set of questions that you had to ask or or how did you know like what were you asking? Yeah, like, they was that, was that figured out ahead of time? Dwell had sent us kind of rough set of questions that they wanted us to conduct the interview around. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm asking him the questions and kind of talking back and forth with him on things, um you other stuff would come up and I that I'd think of right. and I just throw it in there and you know but yeah they they pretty much provided some questions to to cover um and it, it was very open to interpretation as far as the final product that we delivered for the most part um right yeah it was kind of just your our vision yeah how we thought it, the, sto the story should be cut together and then the b-roll on top and it was it was really wasn't anything to change after that I mean yeah and Which I had kind of nice. given Corey the direction to say, you know, let's let's do a little bit of uh, what's his name on this. Um, fantastic Mr. Fox, Tannenbaums. Yeah. What's that, what's that dude's name? The director? Oh, uh, Wes Anderson. Yeah. Like to, to me, this reeks of a little bit of Wes Anderson to a degree. So we we kind of like had like a 10 to 20 percent Wes Anderson voice in our heads as we were trying to uh, do the videography. Um, you'll see that a little bit, I think. Um, other than that, that was that was pretty much it. And uh, it, it was a super fun job to do. And uh, let's get on to the video. All right. That sounds good. All right. All right.